What it do, guys? We got another book to take a look at here today, or MOOC magazine sort of thing anyway. And this also has a kit packed together with it. So this recently released from, who released this? So Hobby Japan, yes, of course, it's Hobby Japan, is the 30 Minutes Missions completion book here. So it's a book of 30 Minutes Missions builds, and it should be pretty cool. There should be some really nice references in there for your 30 Minutes Missions builds. And then it also comes with a set of waterside decals special to this set as well too. It looks like they're in pink and white, as with the kit is also in pink and white. So not really sure exactly why they decided to go with pink and white for the theme for this, but whatever the case, it's a pink and white theme. So let's go ahead and pop this open and see what we got in here. Uh, and I should mention that uh, this set was a 2,500 yen, so about 25 bucks, considering the Alto kit by itself costs about, I think, 10 bucks or something like that. And these books usually cost about like 25 bucks, usually by themselves. A, a MOOC like this usually would be around 25, 30 bucks by itself. This is a slightly small, but not that much different from other ones. So I think it's a really good price, basically. About 25 bucks for this set is not too bad, too bad at all. Uh, so yes, the kit is an Alto that you get included in here in a very thin box, and it does have kind of the basic artwork here on the front as like similar with the regular kit. And then around on the sides of the box, just kind of the same kind of thing on the back, just kind of advertising about how it's built. And I love how they still can't figure out that to frame is spelled with an R. Uh, oh, Japan. Never, never stop being you. Anyway, you follow your intuition and assemble the kit. Yes, so the runner is laid out head to toe on the runner as the parts are laid out. As we all know, I mean, 30 minutes missions is not anything new at this point. Uh, it started with uh, 30 minutes missions and like earlier HD kits like the Leo, and then they've done it in other kits as well too since then, where like the layout of the parts of the runner is very intuitive as to the parts are grouped together based on which section of the kit they built. So, like I said, yeah, that's not really news to anyone at this point. Let's see, I would have thought that the instructions would have been included in there. They would have just thrown in like the regular Bandai instruction booklet, but not actually, so maybe they are actually really relying on your intuitive building skills to be able to build this without giving any instructions. That said, I think there's probably instructions included in here in the book. I think they, no matter how easy it is, they wouldn't leave it completely up to you to figure out how to build it or maybe they do no here they are so we do have all the instructions here in the book we'll take a look at that and that looks really nice we'll take a look at that here in a second so our a runner here like i said is molded in pink and white and this piece just came off of there we've got our poly caps here in gray and then our b and c runners here are just molded in a kind of uh, gunmetal color which does also look really really nice so I'll build that up, we'll take a look at that here in a little bit, but let's just go ahead and then check out the book. So the book itself, like I said, has a really nice feel to it, very heavy cardstock, and it's very, everything's a matte finish, so a lot of times these will be, you know, glossy or something, but that should make it very easy for me to show you guys on camera with it being matte finished, then we won't get so much glare on the pages, that's good, it's just glossy here on the outside, but there's the outside and then here on the back, we have this photograph of some kits here. This looks like just a, like a Bandai promotional image there, basically. I don't think that's anything made specially for this book. It doesn't really seem like it. All right, on the inside here, we just got a look at some custom builds. Most of these look pretty stock for the most part. They have like some custom parts, but they're not getting like super crazy with the customization with these anyway, but I'm not sure if we'll get into that later on in the book if we'll see some more that are like really heavily customized, like some of the stuff you can see on Twitter is pretty wild. But you can see uh, the marking decals on here that are included with this, so we'll see those. We got our table of contents here, nice photograph of the unpainted and painted version of the Alto here with the little antenna added onto the top, that looks nice. Painted weather with the decals and everything, so of course just some beautiful photography here, the start of the book. Um, some story, yeah, no one really cares about that, <laughs> I don't know, personally I don't really care that much about 30 minutes missions, obviously there's no anime or manga or anything like that, I'm sure they probably will, they should make a manga or something at least, at some point, they should, Bandai should get that made, but there is a little bit of a backstory to it, uh, sort of, but I, again, I don't really care that much about it to be honest. So there were some of the designs are pretty cool and that's all that really matters to me personally but again here's just a little bit about just kind of the construction process how the runners are broken up into sections so yes that's all very good and well and then some details about the alto itself so like some of the posing options and some of the finer points of articulation that go into it so it's basically like look how good our kit is like that 
And over here, there's pretty interesting, some color mixing and matching between the different um, uh, kits. Because basically, as you guys know, the 30 Minutes Missions kits, they put them out in tons of different colors. So you don't even have to paint to be able to mix and match and make these all these different color combinations. I love how this one is basically the exact color scheme of that uh, Naoki custom build. I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but you guys know what I'm talking about, that uh, custom Naoki build that's in this exact color scheme like that. Uh, but some really cool examples here that you can make. So it's a good uh, idea. Some references there. You got like kind of uh, the Bloodsucker. Votam's uh, kind of dark bluish purplish body with the red shoulder I believe is, is that's right, right? It's kind of similar to that Votam's design. Then over here getting some more, then over here getting wild with some more different custom parts and things. Uh, some more battle images and I think these are all just like 3D renders basically just stuff used for advertisements. So. Not really quite as interesting, but there you go. Now this is basically like the printed version of the instruction manual. So you have like, this is, you know, if you guys have ever built one of these kits, this is basically exactly what the regular instruction manual looks like. It's just interesting to have this like in an, like magazine form. It's kind of cool. But there's our parts list there and it goes through the construction. I mean, it's nice to have this all in nice. It's very large and full color, everything. So. It's a cool instruction manual to have like instruction manual printed in a book like this in such a high quality. But here's what we really want to see. So getting into some of the actual building process. So here's kind of like the uh, basic tools. So like basic building tools up here. We got nippers, cutting mat, sanding sticks, a knife, a hobby knife, and tweezers. I would say basically you need nippers, hubby knife, and maybe sanding stick, and that's really kind of all you necessarily really need for this. If you're doing the decals as well too, then you need uh, tweezers, but you surely don't necessarily need a cutting mat, you don't necessarily need this type of knife. I used it just to open the packaging, but that's all. And then for like uh, basic steps of like finishing the kits, then you've got Gundam markers, real touch markers, uh, Tamiya Weathering Master uh, pigments, some brushes, some little paint trays, some weathering color here, some top coat, and some tape, some kind of metallic tape. Interestingly, I don't think that's necessarily branded. I don't know if different companies make that uh, different branded metallic tape, but I'm sure probably. So starting off, just the basic building steps. So if you are a super beginner modeler, there's some good uh, steps in here for you to just learn the basics of nub removal, basically cut off the part, leave a little bit on there, uh, then cut that down a little bit more and sand it down with your sanding stick and you get that all looking nice and smooth. Polish that up. You can use your finger as well too. Just kind of rub it a little bit to get rid of that even more. You will have a little bit of that white uh, mark left from that process, but you can basically get rid of that. So there's your basic build. Now step two, pen aligning using Gundam Real Touch markers. So you can pen align just right on the runners, well, a lot of times we're always talking about don't paint on the runners, but paint aligning on the runners is something that uh, can be done with much greater success anyway for a basic build like this. So here's really cool at the bottom here showing you the difference between pan aligning in, let's see, gray, black, brown, and then I'm not sure this is just a light gray or something, maybe a dark gray and light gray, but just the different colors of pen align marker or pen align pen that you can use. Or I think this was this one is in uh, mechanical pencil. Yeah, so it's got gray, brown, black Gundam marker, real touch marker, and then also mechanical pencil. So mechanical pencil can be used, especially on white. You can use that and it's very light on there. Then here we can see how that's just snap built up with nothing else except for some panel lining on it. Obviously already that's a big improvement to this one, just built up with nothing. And this one with all the panel lining done on it, because there's a lot of details on these kits. So panel lining them up uh, will certainly improve the look of that and then top coat of course uh yeah for like a simple build like this that's all you really need to do just stick the whole kit onto a little just a piece of runner just cut off a piece of runner or something stick it up its butt right there and then just give it a good spray you can take off a couple pieces as needed but then we can make it really dirty with the mr weathering color so you just basically slap the weathering color all over it like that uh, then use a Q-tip and use the solvent, which why is it, it's not really showing the solvent. Is Or is this using a solvent or just a Q-tip? It looks like it's just a Q-tip, but I would assume they're using some of the solvent here as well too. Uh, to then just wipe that clean and that's drastically changing the look of that. So that was like almost pure white. And then now it's a much, much darker, dirtier look. So you can see it's quite a difference there in the color after you've laid that, uh, let's see, what is that? Ground brown is the color of that, that uh, Tamiya, or Mr. Hobby, Mr. Weathering color. They're making a bunch of different colors, uh, but ground brown is a pretty 
common to easy to find ones so you should be able to find that and again looks great the kit there even with just the wash on there looks much much better all right now getting into doing some more detail work painting some silver in behind the clear part for the visor of course is going to make that shine nice and brightly all the details up inside there using also some metallic like under markers here to paint in some of these little details on some of these bits just to make that look a little bit nicer as well too using some of your metallic tape to make the sensor of the camera there in the rifle and also for these little bits like this little bit here on the front of the crotch using just some red metallic tape in there and then water side decal application as well too we all know how those work so water side decals of course going to improve the look so those are all the basic building steps now we can see some example builds here it looks like some really interesting builds here of the alto and i'm not sure is this like just kind of all alto themed it does uh no 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 some of these are getting into some of the other ones as well too uh, it's not completely all alto stuff there's some portanova and other things as well so anyway just these first few just seems to be focused on the alto and man some really cool color schemes i really do need to do some work like painting work on some of these kits because they're cool kits to play around with but i've still yet to do any painting or anything on them just i don't know i felt like i wanted to do something really cool with them but i think i just need to stop worrying about doing something super cool and just do something fun and cool I don't know, super cool. <laughs> you guys get what I mean. Better to just make something and have fun with it rather than worrying about like making the best thing you could possibly make with this thing. Cause you know, if you have another idea later, you can always get another one. So there's some really cool colors on these. I like with the white and pink and then that kind of uh, tannish green color there for the armor parts added onto that. I think that's like for the commander parts added onto the Alto. That looks really cool. And this one as well too, with like the two-tone white, it's got uh, like this creamy white for like the base model. It seems like all of these, like the base model is like the this base model that's included and like kind of a slightly warm white, but then these add-on parts added for the mask and the chest are in a really pure white. So you get a little bit kind of two-tone white there that looks very nice here for this one. Right there, that looks very cool. Uh, the Heavy Arms, HJ color, Alto Heavy Arms, obviously that's Hobby Japan color, this color scheme, the white and pink color scheme is the Hobby Japan color scheme, I guess what they're going with. And the Heavy Arms version of that, so I guess it's just adding the yellow parts on there. And again, those yellow parts look great on there. So just these weird color combinations that I would think, you know, wouldn't necessarily work, but uh, just because of the design of these 30 Minutes Missions kits and how things, I mean, how they go together, they're really making it work, all these weird color schemes. Uh, commander type here so again just the painted one I think this is the one from the front of the magazine there uh, with a little bit of weathering and everything on there it looks like maybe a little bit of work done uh, it's kind of hard to tell if it's weathering or like little holes drilled but I do really like that uh, little commander fin on the top of the head that does look really nice so that's looking cool yeah these are the units that are on the front of the magazine He's uh, gone ahead and made a beam saber for this as well too, just using a beam saber effect part with that. That's very cool. Got some nice different posing options here showcased. And this little picture down here is gonna be hard for you guys to see, but you can see like up behind the visor in the head, he painted like some silver and also like a little dot of red in there to make like the center kind of visor camera. You can kind of see it uh, behind the visor there. So that does look really cool. So some really good examples for ideas, how to detail up your 30 minutes mission stuff. So. Here's another new set. Now this is moving on, let's see. Uh, Hobby Japan Pro Modeler stuff here. All right, let's see. I haven't been checking who these are by. I don't know if any of these are like by like notable modelers. Oh, it does say who they're by up here. Shinichiro Sawatake, for example. That one, let's see. Uh, this one modeled and described by Hiroshi Sarai. So this would be the one in the front of the cover, Hiroshi Sarai. Uh, not the name that sounds familiar, but I'm sure I've probably seen him on Twitter or something. Anyway, getting back to it, here's the Alto Snipe. So it's got the sniper equipment on there and some other different option parts. Again, that white and blue color scheme looks great on that as well too. Uh, Altered XXs, interesting name there, by Tepe Hayashi. That's a really cool a combination of the swords and shield there mounted on the arm. That's pretty interesting. Nice, and he sharpened up some parts there. Do some customization on uh, like the kind of mask part. Uh, the Rabiot Heavy Custom here, modeled by Yasutaka Chotoku. Very dark, very heavy color scheme for this with some nice mud weathering and stuff around there on the feet. 
that looks pretty cool. This one reminds me of like a uh, armored core, kind of by just how dark and heavy the color scheme is, and it's got a lot of bulky equipment and stuff on there. It reminds me of an armored core kit. Uh, Desert Rab, yep, here that's looking really cool. I like the uh, two tone, like the sandy color with the darker brown and then the white stripe on the brown, and the little accent of the red there above the visor. It's a really cool color scheme for this. I really like that. And I like how it's got the backpack kind of similar to the Mudrock Gundam there, or like Gun Cannon, of course, whatever, but that does look really cool. I like that. All right, then we got an Air Fighter Rabiot. So a uh, Rabiot with the uh, Air, I can't remember the name of it. I guess it's probably Air Fighter or something. Anyway, the name of that uh, optional like flight backpack kind of parts added onto there. So it's like a dark, maybe just black color scheme for that with the white backpack. It does look pretty cool there as well too. Uh, with those custom base parts, Rabiot Gatling and extended arm uh, armament vehicle tank version. So you got like a spray painted, sprayed camo color scheme on this one. And really like that uh, he used that like construction head, like the clear part there in the head. That looks really nice for that one as well too. Cool little custom base for that. And the Porta Nova Rogue. Ooh, so it's dark and it's got the uh, the hook hand. I like uh, this. Is, he must be a Gundam Age fan. Who's this by? Akira Sakai. Um, what's the Dark Hound or whatever, right? I mean, that's not the Dark Hound. There's a different one that has the hook hand from Gundam Age. Sorry guys, I'm not a <laughs> not an Age person, but definitely reminds me of that. It's got like the same color scheme and then like uh, the hand and the backpack from like the Crossbone or inspired by the Crossbone Gundam. Those aren't exactly Crossbone parts. I think these are probably from that uh, option set. I, or something. They're like a simplified version. So yeah, I think they're, they must be from that option set. I can't remember what it's called. Something. But that does look really cool. So it's kind of like a, a crossbone slash age inspired 30 minutes missions Portanova build. Which is a pretty cool idea. I can dig it. Uh, Portanova snow battle uh, type with skis. Also very cool. It's got some really heavy like uh, snow weathering on that. Looking very frosty over the whole thing. It's got like the tarp, blanket, whatever kind of cover rolled up there on the back. I wonder how that's made, if it's actual cloth or if it's like putty, you know, rolled up to look like cloth like that. Unfortunately, there's like a work in progress down here of like the base, but that's like a comparison, but unfortunately no work in progress images about uh, that cloth. But I wonder, you can probably find him on Twitter, Manabu Kimura, Kimura Manabu. Uh, Portanova close combat specialization type. Really cool image up here with the glowing uh, light in the hand and glowing mask and the glowing axe there. So the close combat specialization type. So yeah, close combat there with that axe. That makes sense. Not really sure what the hand is supposed to be. If it's meant to be just like a flashlight or if it's actually meant to be like some sort of laser weapon or something, you know, cannon or something. Who knows? But I think flashlight, that sounds also kind of cool. Just to imagine it's just got like a light for a hand. Uh, Alto Desert Chariots. So this is interesting. This some I like this with like the big heavy equipment like on the legs. It's a that's an interesting look. And Portanova Sand Slipper, Sand Sliper, uh, hmm. Sliper. I guess we'll say we'll call that. There's only one P, so it's not Slipper. Hmm. This one as well too has a cool uh, must be custom made cloth part there for that. That one definitely looks like it's probably just made out of putty. Yeah, here's a little bit kind of about that that he just made to lay over the side of that. So interesting colors, very MSV, like Desert Zaku kind of color schemes there. Uh, kind of reminds me of that. A Desert Scorpion, a multiple leg one, six legged one here with the kind of custom made tail part. That's pretty wild. It's connected part. So we are getting into some a little bit more crazy customs. I mean, I've seen some really wild ones around on Twitter. So far, nothing in this has really been like as crazy as some of the stuff I've seen around on Twitter, but still some really nice ones uh, with just like some simple customization. I mean, they're just kit bashing parts uh, with the kits. And I mean, that's really all you need to do. You don't really need to get too crazy uh, with these kits to be able to come up with something really cool. Like this one, I really like the colors on this too. Like the black and white or blue and black with the white accents and the other silver parts and stuff. Some cool armaments, and the head design is really cool on this one as well too. All those uh, weapon stuff stored in the backpack with this really long weapon. That's really cool looking, I like that a lot, yeah. Sort of reminds me of the Helmut Ring car a little bit, sort of, eh? From uh, Iron Blood Orphans. Uh, Seal Nova Marine type here. Oh man, this looks really cool. Ah yeah, I really like that. The Seal Nova is probably one of my favorite of the uh, 30 Minutes missions lines so far. 
it's just really cool. I like this big, massive, bulky legs, and it's got a cool head design as well, too. This looks really awesome, with those big, massive arms and those big legs and everything. Yeah, I really like that. That's cool. Super chunky. That's really interesting, though. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, here's another really cool Seal Nova. Yeah, definitely. I really like the Seal Nova. These colors are amazing as well, too. Who's this by? Uh, Seiken Nagao, Seal Nova Striker. So, not necessarily too into this uh, kind of gigantic throwing star weapon. I mean, it's not really to my taste, but it's a cool, it's a cool design otherwise, and a really cool custom uh, color scheme. That kind of pale reddish orange is a really interesting color with the green and black accents on there. That's really cool. Uh, Porta Nova Marine type here, cool uh, base diorama here for that. So like frosty, sort of like, it should be an arctic type, it's marine type. But anyway, marine type, it's got the big backpack and everything on there, very cool. Porta Nova Space type, of course, he's gone for all white. It's even more white than the base, the base kit is like already almost all white, but the joint parts and stuff aren't white, but he even made the joints white. And uh, made all these thruster belts gold, which I mean, it looks a bit ugly, in my opinion, but seems like sort of more realistic in a way, kind of, as well, too. I don't really like the gold accents on that necessarily, but still, very cool kit, the space version of the Porta Nova. Uh, and then we got some just text information here, which I believe is probably just a kind of information, uh, background about the development of the kits or something like that. And the new one that's coming out, I forget the name of this one, uh, this is the third minute's mission, let's see, uh, Spinatio Sengoku type, yes, anyway. This sort of like a ninja themed one, which is going to be coming out. Or I don't, yeah, I don't think it's out yet. I don't think the first version is out. Or like maybe the first version has just recently come out. And different like armor sets then there for that. And you got some examples of that, which do look kind of interesting. And some of the different weapon sets and things. The weapon set does look pretty cool. There's some really nice weapons in that set. It looks like. And this whole like kind of uh, one wheel motorcycle kind of set. Not too necessarily interested in that, but I'm sure we'll see some people doing some really crazy, interesting custom work with that. Uh, and then 30 minutes missions. So this is just seems like just kind of a profile of all the kits basically that have been released so far, sort of. So like the, the different versions of the Alto, color versions of that, the Alto flight type, the grounds type, uh, the color versions of the armor, special armor for that, the Rabiots and the option parts for that, and the Porta Nova, and all the option parts for that, the space type, the marine type, the commander type parts, the seal Nova, the parts for that. So yeah, this is just a showcase of everything that's been released so far, basically it looks like. All the other different uh, weapon sets and option sets, other option sets, uh, the decal set, which was uh, released. So interestingly, the decal set for this one I was expecting it to be pretty much similar to the set that's already been released, but just in white and pink, rather than like in this one's kind of white and black and gray, sort of. But it does seem to be quite a bit more different than I was expecting, which is great. And then there's some of the other stuff that's been released, some of the like uh, base diorama scene uh, sets that they put out as well too. So here's a little tip just about the water slide decal guide where the markings are suggested to go on the kit but of course it's just a suggestion you don't necessarily have to follow that and here they are a quite small little sheet here it's a little bit smaller than I was expecting but that's also okay let's see if I can get this out of here without damaging anything and I was worried about this uh, sticky residue now going to be making these pages stick together but it seems like I can get this out of here without uh, without that being stuck to anything it's that uh, kind of sticker stuff i don't know what to call it you know residue it's like this kind of anyway whatever they use on that you can peel it away from the page without it leaving anything sticky so that's good there we go all clean very nice just the back page of the book here just again showing some of the sample builds that we saw in there and that's the book and here are the decals so some very nice decals there again all just in this kind of magenta pink color and white it's not like super pinky pink like a light pink it's a dark pink so i mean if you're not wanting to put a bunch of pink uh <laughs> decals on your kid or whatever i think these are a, a really nice color you got a few black ones on there as well too and some markings down there at the bottom but overall yeah really nice to have included with this so i think overall for the value like i said for 2500 yen uh the magazine the decals the kit itself i think that's a very fair price for this so definitely very cool 
And then of course we have the Alto itself here. I've just gone ahead and quickly snapped it up, thrown a little bit of pen aligner in there just to give you guys a look at that. But you know, it's just your average HG Alto kit, very nice kit. And you know, just with a little simple pen aligning and then just throw a couple of these decals on there, some top coat. It's certainly going to be looking very nice. So really nice little kit here. And it's just a, again, a nice pack in to be included with this. Cause even if you've got one or two or three of this kit already, having another one, it certainly doesn't feel like a, uh, a, a waste just to have like oh, another alto kit it's a fun kit so why not so there you have it guys really cool set here from hobby japan if you're interested i would highly recommend checking it out if you're interested in, in 30 minutes missions or even if you're not that into 30 minutes missions there there might be some interesting tips or ideas things that you might get from the book here so i think it's worth having a look and a really fair price i think around 25 bucks for this set is not too bad at all so check it out if you're interested and if you guys have any other further questions about this set or anything of course just let me know down in the comment section below thank you guys so much for watching as always and for your support liking the video commenting subscribing all that is greatly appreciated so until next time guys hope you're all having a great day i'll see you later bye bye